Hallelujah. Everybody, go ahead and share as we give God a little praise this morning. Hallelujah. God is worthy. He is worthy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. God is worthy to be praised. The song says, Hallelujah is the highest praise. So somebody shout Hallelujah right now. You may be at, at home. You may be even at Walmart right now. I don't know where you're at, but I want somebody to shout Hallelujah because Hallelujah truly is the highest praise and God is truly worthy of our praise this morning. He is worthy of all that we can even think to give him because he's just been, he's been just that good. Praise God. God has been just that good. So first off, good morning, new beginnings. Hallelujah. Good morning, new beginnings. I am Tim White, Minister Tim White, and you are tuning in. If this is your first time, you're tuning in to New Beginnings Christian Life Center. Our pastor is Pastor Kevin Wright and Pastor Leslie Wright. We thank God for our pastors on today. And we just thank God for our New Beginnings family. Everybody that's tuned in today, uh, God bless you. Uh, just continue to give God praise because God is good. Hallelujah. We thank God that uh, last Sunday, praise God, we got a chance to see each other. Did everybody enjoy that? If you enjoyed last Sunday, in the comments or in the in the in the in their type that you enjoy last Sunday. Pastor gave us an amazing word. It was it was a right on time word. Praise God, because God is so good. So if you enjoyed, I want to see some, I want to see some people putting it in there. That if you enjoy last Sunday, just type I enjoy last Sunday. Praise God, because God is good. All right. So we just want to come before you today uh with a with a word from the Lord. Amen. Uh, God is good. So let us go into a uh, uh, prayer. Let's 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 pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, we just want to say thank you right now, Father God, for your grace and your mercy, Father God. We just thank you, Father God, for being so good to us, oh God. God, you've been so good. No matter what is going on in our life, we just want to say thank you because you have been so good. We just thank you for just keeping us. And Lord God, we pray that as we go forward today in your word, that you anoint my lips that you would anoint the words that are coming out of my mouth, that you speak through me as a conduit 
to edify your people, that something may be said, that we will be encouraged, that we can go forward, that we will not give up from the enemy's hand, but we will stand strong in you, Father God. And we just love you. And we give your name all the glory and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. As I mentioned, I am Minister Tim White, and you are tuning in to New Beginnings Christian Life Center. Our pastors, pastors are Pastor Kevin and Pastor Leslie Wright. But we're going to get right into it. Um, it's a beautiful day today. Praise God. It's a beautiful day. I know some people woke up this morning feeling real good because they went to bed last night with JSU coming on top. Oh, somebody's still praising God over JSU, but I want to just say, that there was there was a there was a great game. I just I just loved how everyone came together, sold out crowd, and everything went well. Alcorn played a great game, but I just wanted to give a shout out this morning to the JSU Tigers, completing a complete undefeated swag season so far, and and they're going to the title. So I just want to just give that little bit, that, that little snippet. But let's get into the word. Praise God, praise God. Our, our title of our message today is something that the Lord gave to me. Uh, me and my wife had been talking about it. And the thing that God gave me this morning, praise God, is don't give up. Keep giving thanks unto God. Praise God. Let me say that again. Don't give up. You just keep on giving thanks unto God. Right now we're going into uh, the, the holiday season uh, this week. This Thursday, we will have Thanksgiving Day. Praise God. And this Thanksgiving, for a lot of people, it may be a little different. Praise God. It may be just a little bit different this year. Because for the past almost two years, a lot have changed. Praise God. A lot have changed in our lives. Some people have lost loved ones. Some people have maybe lost employment. Some people lost their business, lost their home. So many people are going through so many things. So this year... Thanksgiving may be a little bit different, but what I want to encourage you to do is don't give up on your situation. Keep giving God thanks. Why? Why? Let's go to our text scriptures today. Uh, text scriptures, we're going to start out with Psalms 107 and 1. Psalms 107 and 1. And the word of the Lord says, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Mm, we can stop right there. He said, oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Why? Because he is good. In spite of what you feel like right now, in spite of what you're going through, give thanks unto the Lord because he is still good. And the Bible continues to say, for his mercy endures forever. Praise God. His mercy endures forever. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endures forever. That's our first text scripture. We got two text scriptures today. Uh, the second one is Psalms 92. All right, Psalms 92. If you will, go to Psalms 92. That's our second text scripture. Praise God. Praise God. Psalms 92. And the Bible says, in Psalms 92, it said, it is a good thing. <laughs> it is a good thing to do what? To give thanks unto the Lord. And to sing praises unto his name, O Most High. And verse 2 says, to show forth thy loving kindness in the morning and thy faithfulness every night. So it's a good thing to keep giving thanks unto God. What you got to understand is when you're going through and you want to give up, give, throw in the towel, you want to give it all up. Because pastors say you're either, now y'all correct me now, somebody typing in the chat if I messed this up. He said you're either going through about to go through are you just coming out of something all right so you may find yourself in any one of these stages but what i'm telling you is do not give up keep giving god praise keep thanking god because one thing i know about giving thanks it said giving thanks leads to praise giving thanks leads to praise and giving praise releases the blessings of god Amen. Sometimes you find yourself just giving God, just thanking God, just thanking him. And before you know it, your hands go up. And before you know it, you're just in a full out praise and worship unto God. And that's when the blessing, that's when your situation starts to change. So just keep giving thanks unto God. 
Now, you may have messed up. That's what. That's why the Bible said that his mercy endures forever. So let's look at another scripture here. Uh, and we're, and what, we, what I want to do is look at someone that may have went through a whole lot. And that person is David. In the, in the book of Psalms, David just expressed himself. David had went through so much. David was a fighter. He was a warrior. He was a, he, he was a soldier. But he had went through so much. And there were so many times David wanted to just quit. So many times he could have just given up. And that's where you may find yourself at sometimes. Sometimes the, 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 the cares of this world, the things that we go through, it make you want to throw in the towel, make you want to give up. But let me just, just encourage you on today through the words or through the life of David. So let's, let's, let's turn real quick to Psalms 41. Praise God. God is good. It said it's a good thing. It's a good thing for you to keep giving God thanks. It's a good thing to start your prayers off with thanks. Before you start asking for anything, enter his gates with what? Thanksgiving. Just start thanking God. And you may not have what you want, but you got something. Praise God. Uh, I had a cousin. We was at a funeral of an of a uncle. And my cousin, he, he, he preached a message. He did the eulogy. And he said that as long as your lungs can inflate and deflate, glory to God, you got something to be thankful for, huh? You have something to be thankful for. Because one thing about the enemy, the enemy, he's good at paint pictures, huh? <laughs> the enemy is good at paint pictures. All the enemy wants you to do is focus on something else. The enemy is always trying to get you to focus on something else. He want to make you focus on the negative. People are always coming to you with negative news. They always want you want to focus on the negative, what you, ha what you don't have. That's what the enemy wants you to focus on. But what I want you to focus on is what you do have. And give, start by giving thanks to God. You know what? I don't have a turkey. Huh? But I have some chicken. Huh? You may not have a big old turkey. You may have a little small hen this year for Thanksgiving. But praise God, you got something. I don't hear nobody talking to me. But praise God, you have something. The enemy want to show you you don't have this. You got money. You got a little money in your bank account. But your enemy say you ain't got this in your bank account. And you start feeling the same way. But man, you got to. At least I got some devil. Huh? And you start thanking God for what you have. When Jesus, when they brought the, 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 the listen to me now, when they brought the, the, the little fish huh, and, the, and the loaves of bread, they gave it to Jesus. And the first thing Jesus said, he thanked God. He started giving thanks. And when he started giving thanks, it, it, he broke it and it just kept passing it out. Why? Because the enemy probably said, man, you ain't got enough to feed all these folks. But what Jesus said, I'm going to thank God for what I do have. And when he thanked God for what he did have, boom, a miracle happened. I'm talking to somebody right now. Somebody is there. Your heart is heavy. Mm, your heart is heavy. Listen, when I when I when I say that, I'm speaking from experience. For the past four months, we have lost four. I've lost four close uncles and one distant uncle. That make five uncles in total, but four close uncles. So I understand. Sometimes your heart get heavy, huh? Your heart get heavy. But I say I still got some uncles. Hmm. Always trying to find that lining, whether they say the lining in the sun or however they put it. You're always trying to be thank. Just give God thanks. And as you continue to give God thanks, he start working. Listen to me. Now, I said turn to Psalm 41. Mercy. It said, oh, give thanks unto the Lord for he is good and his mercy endures forever. I don't, I, listen, I think we read that, but we don't really read it. We don't really comprehend when it says his mercy endures forever. In other words, God's mercy do not have an expiration date. Glory to God. Glory to God. God's mercy ain't going to expire. It is not like the milk in the refrigerator. It, it, it expires in two weeks. God's mercy endures It ain't going nowhere. It ain't going nowhere. So what is mercy? What is mercy? Mercy is you getting something other than what you deserve. Mm. Here's the thing. Some of us are going through right now, and what you're going through, it may be your own fault. Listen to me. It may be your own fault what you're going through, but here's the thing. 
his mercy, <laughs> his mercy endures forever. Why? Because he is good. So yeah, you may have been going through something. You may have done something that you may not have should have done. And that's when the enemy starts to beat you down the most. Mm. You feeling bad because of what you did, the mistake that you made, and the enemy it just want to just beat you down. You know you shouldn't have did that. You shouldn't have did that. You just wrong. You just a bad person. You the enemy want to just beat you down till you just you just you just cover up. You just you just cover up and don't want to hear no more. Close the blinds. Shut the shades. I ain't going nowhere. I'm I, I'm just giving up. The enemy keeps showing you your mistake. He is the accuser of the brethren. He's always trying to show you how messed up you are. And David, mm, David made some mistakes. Yes, he did. Yes, he. Go back and read David. Read all about David. David made some mistakes. But one thing about David, he knew his mercy. Oh, glory to God. His mercy endures forever. His mercy do not expire. Listen to me. So let's go to Psalms 42. No, no, Psalms 41. Psalms 41. Psalms 41. And we're going to start at verse, um, let's go to verse 4. Psalms 41, verse, verse 4. His mercy is everlasting. You may have messed up. You may want to give up. Man, listen, you running your business, you made a, a, a decision that you should have not made. You done lost money. You almost went bankrupt. The doors almost closed. You may have went bankrupt. Now everybody looking at you, at you sideways and you feeling bad. But listen, his mercy, <laughs> his mercy endure. That's why David could say, just give thanks to the Lord. He's good. His mercy is coming. It don't expire. It don't. So Psalms 41 verse 4 says, this is David talking now. This is David. He said, I said, Lord, be merciful unto me. Heal my soul. Why? For I have sinned against you. David said, listen, God, I messed up. I messed up. I sinned against you. And I'm feeling a certain type of way because I sinned against you. There may be somebody right now that says, you know what? I'm, I messed up. I sinned. I messed up. And what the enemy wants you to do is turn back around and go another direction. Instead of running towards God, the enemy wants you to give up. Why? Because you messed up. And that was David. He saw himself, you know what, God? I messed up. He admitted that he messed up. I've sinned against you, God. Be merciful unto me. But this is what it, this is what happened. This is what David said in verse 5. Psalm 41, verse 5. My enemies speak evil of, of me. When shall he die and his name perish? That's the enemy right there. You done messed up and the enemy wants you to just flat out die. The enemy wants you to take your own life. The enemy wants you to, I'm talking about not just give up and, and don't come out. The enemy wants to take your name away from this earth, out of people's mouth forever. And that's why I want to talk to somebody right now, because we got Thanksgiving coming and we're go, we go through so many emotions right now. This is the time where we come together with family and we just have a good time. But for somebody, that may not be the case. That may not be the case. You may have lost someone close to you. So this year is a little different. But what I'm telling you is just keep giving thanks unto God. Why? His mercy endures forever. Some of you thought you would have been better off than you was this year at this point of the year. But listen, <laughs> his mercy endures forever. You just keep giving God thanks for what you do have. You keep giving God thanks for what you do have. That's going to lead to your giving praise. And that's going to lead to the blessings. That's going to lead to the miracles. Why? When they brought it to Jesus, he blessed him. He thanked God. And God made a miracle. You just can't give up. But David said, listen, my enemies want me dead. My enemies want me dead. Uh, verse six says, and if he come to see me, he speak vanity. His heart gather iniquity to itself. When he goeth abroad, he telleth it. All that hate me whisper together against me. Against me do they desire my hurt. The enemy wants you done. The, the enemy, listen, when you're down and out, the enemy want to kick you on down. Huh? 
When you're down and out, the enemy want to kick you. When, you. when you're on fire, the enemy want to pour gasoline on you. Just hurry up and burn them to a crisp. That's what the enemy want. <clears throat> but God is good. So he said, also, he said in verse 8, he said, An evil disease, they say, cleave fast unto him. And now that he lies, he shall, now that he lieth, he shall rise up no more. Do you hear that? Do you hear that? Can you just imagine you already done messed up and sinned against God? You feeling bad. And not only that, the mistakes that you made, the enemy is talking bad to you. I wish he'd just get COVID and die. I wish, he, I wish he'd get cancer and die. They just, the enemy want you gone. The enemy, as we said in our title, he wants you to give up. What I'm telling you is keep giving praise. Keep giving thanks unto God. But it, listen, verse 9, it wasn't just David's enemies. Look at verse 9. Verse 9 says, Yay! Even my own familiar friends. Whoo, glory. Even my, listen, I thought I could get some, some, some relief and go, go talk to my friends and give me some encouragement. At least I can go talk to my friends. But David said, even my own familiar friends in whom I trusted. You don't just trust anybody. You don't just trust anybody. The friends in whom he trusted, his familiar friends in whom he trusted. What did they do? Did they, did they give him some encouraging words? Did they come see about him? What they do? It says, my, my own familiar friends in whom I trusted, which I did eat bread with, have lifted up his heel against me. David said, listen, my enemies want me killed. My enemies want me dead. They wish I'd get a disease and die. I'm going to sin against God. But see, I know God is merciful. But my enemies, they ain't giving me no mercy. And then on top of that... The friend that I trusted, we broke bread together. We went to lunch together, huh? My friends then turned their back on me too. Mm. I definitely want to give up right now, but don't you give up. <laughs> don't you give up. Why? For God is good. Yes, his mercy endures forever. It is a good thing. It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord. Verse 10 says, but thou. You see, listen, listen, listen. <laughs> This is what David said. Lord, I sinned against you. My enemies want me dead. They hurt. They speak evil against me, even my own friends. But thou, verse 10, but thou, O Lord, be merciful unto me. Raise me up that I may requite them. Why? That I may respond to them in a different manner. Huh? The Lord is going to be merciful unto me. When all of them turned their back on me, my enemies, my friends, those that I love, they turned their back on me. I, I want to quit. But no, 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 no. His mercy endures forever. But so since, since his mercy endures forever, I know it's going to get better. So instead of me griping and complaining and being mopey and being down, I'm just going to give thanks unto God. Hmm? If you go back and look at uh, Psalms, let's say 53 through 59, David just constantly asking God, have mercy on God. Have mercy. Listen, David messed up. He, he messed up with Bathsheba. If you understood or remember the story of Bathsheba, when uh, I I'm, I'm, hope I'm saying her name right, Bathsheba, Solomon's mom, she was already married. David had her husband put on the front line so that he could die to cover up his sins. David messed up. Listen, you may not have done nothing near what David has done. And when David found out, when the prophet came and told him that it was him, the prophet had to give a parable so he can understand what he's done. David was hurt. And that's where you see all these songs where David saying, God, be merciful unto me. God, be merciful unto me. Let's go to Psalms 54. Y'all bear with me now. Psalms 54. Psalms 54, because somebody is wanting to quit and somebody is wanting to give up. But it's a good thing that you keep on giving God thanks. That's going to get you out of there. Because as you start thanking, thanks going to lead unto praise. And praise is going to lead to your breakthrough. Listen to me. You're going through. Stop focusing on what you don't have. Stop focusing on the negative. Focus on his mercy endures forever. Matter of fact, hold, hold, hold what we just said. Let's go to Psalms 121. Let's go to Psalms 121 because it's important that we do this real quick. It's important that we go to 100, Psalms 121, verses 1. Psalms 121, a familiar passage. 
But I want you to understand why David can still give thanks unto God in spite of everybody putting him down, in spite of his friends turning him back because he looked into them. But then he realized in Psalms 121, it says, I will lift up my eyes. He, look, he lifting his eyes up. See, the enemy wants you to focus on something different now. The enemy took Jesus up on the mountain. He showed him something. The enemy always trying to show you pictures. That's why they call uh, television, tell a vision. The enemy always trying to show you something. And a lot of things that he show you is a deception. Is He's deceiving you. He's a de deceiver of the brother. He's the accuser of the brother. He's been a trickster from day one. All he wants to do is kill, steal, and do what? destroy. That's all he wants you to do. He wants you to give up. He want to destroy you. <clears throat> but David said, listen, I will lift up my eyes unto the hills from which cometh my help. Verse two, my help comes from the Lord, which made the heavens and the earth. Verse three, I will, he will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He keepeth thee. He keep, he that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel neither sleep nor slumber. Your God is with you. Your God is with you. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day nor by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The enemy can try all he want. Don't give up. That's what I'm telling somebody right now. Don't give up. Listen, it may be bad. Some of y'all, it may be going good right now. It may be going good right now. So you gotta, you, you can easily lift your hands. You can easily give God praise. You can thank, oh, thank you, God. I got the fattest turkey in the land. Oh, thank you, God. My bank account is running over. Oh, thank you, God. But then there's some of us that may not be in that state. But I want you that's not in that state. Oh, thank you, God. I got some water. Hmm? Somebody says, all you got is water. Oh, thank you, God. That water is so pure. And, oh, God, that's the best water I've had. Huh? Before you know it. Somebody to knock on the door. Hey, I just thought we thought about you. We were picking some stuff out the garden. Just, oh, ho, ho, praise God for these greens. Who is it? Hey, listen, I was just thinking about you. We was at the grocery store. We had a two for one special and we thought about you. Oh, thank you, God. Listen, you just start thanking God, huh? You start, stop worrying about what you don't have and just thank God. Oh, the water's warm today, huh? Listen, I remember as a kid, sometimes we, we, I was single, single, grew up with a single parent. Sometimes we didn't have uh, heat and hot water. But what daddy, we, we still be thankful. Daddy take that water, put it in a pot, and put it on the stove, huh? He'll boil that water, get it hot, and boom, we can make a hot bath, huh? We just kept on moving. We said, oh, we ain't got no heat. Daddy, he always had a fireplace, throw some wood in there. He'll cut the oven on, open the door. He'll cut all the eyes on. Just We just bundle up in the kitchen, giving God praise. Oh, glory to God. You just got to start thanking God. Just start thinking whether you got it or you don't got it. Thank God for what you do have. You know how I many people can't do this without having complications, without having problems? And you can, oh, thank you, God. Let everything that have what? Breath. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. But let, 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 me, let me finish. He said, the Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy, preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out. And are coming in from the time, from this time forth, even forevermore. So when the enemy starts shifting your focus to want you to focus on what you don't have, you shift your focus and start giving God thanks for what you do have. Because the more you focus on what the enemy is trying to show you, the more likely you are to try to give up. And when you give up, you're not helping yourself or no one else around you. God has a call on your life. All of us was created by the by the creator for a purpose. There's a purpose for your life. The enemy tried to kill you not too long ago, but you're still here. Why? Because it's a purpose in your life. It's a purpose, a calling on your life. Don't give up. Keep giving God praise. Keep giving God thanks. Now let's go back to Psalms 54. And I want to share with you something that David went through. And see, I always like to see how people overcame Especially when I hear of someone going through something not even nowhere near what I've been through or what I'm going through, I know without a shot of a doubt, he going to bring me through. So let's look at Psalms uh, 54. Psalms 54 says what? This is what God said. Uh, this is what the Bible says in Psalms 54, uh, verse 3. He said, <laughs> he went from, he sinned against God, his enemies, his best friends, 
But now he said for strangers, <laughs> strangers, whoa, strangers has risen up against me. I don't even know these folks. You ever been like that? Somebody don't even like you and don't even know you. They, they, they strength. They don't even know you. They just know of you and know about you with someone else. Said, and now the strangers has came up against you. Oh boy. The enemy, he try all he can to try to get you to quit. He try all he can to try to get you to give up. He make you feel bad that you messed up. He make you feel bad that things went wrong. And then he have the enemies already throwing death threats at you. Then your best friend turn your back on you. And then you just walking around folks you don't even know. And then they go point. That's him right there. That's her. That's her. Man, I don't even know you. And you, oh boy, let me just run and hide and dig a hole and go somewhere and just fall out the face of the earth. That's how we feel sometimes. Honestly, that's how we feel sometimes. And y'all know I'm telling the truth. We all have been there, but I'm telling you right now, I'm inviting you to lift up your hands and say, God, I thank you. God, I thank you. Woo! Because it could have been worse. God, I thank you for how it is. It's getting better. God, I thank you because I know you're going to make a way. Woo -hoo -hoo. When you get like that, the enemy don't know what to do. I done threw everything I could but the kitchen sink. Matter of fact, the devil throw the kitchen sink, the pipes, the wrench, the, the tool bag, and everything else at you. But as long as you can lift up them hands and say, God, I thank you. What are you thanking God for? Thank you that I can say thank you. Glory to God. You just start thanking God. Hmm? I'm talking to you right now. You just start thanking God. Just start looking around. Some of us got so much. We got so much. But it seems like we got so little. Mm. Seems like we got so little. And why do we seem like that? Because the, the enemy want to show you somebody else. See, look at this person. Y'all the same age, and they got way more than you. And here you starting to feel, you know what, that's right. I should be further along in my life by now. <sighs> I'm a failure. And all these thoughts start pouring in your head. All these thoughts. Snap out of it and just start giving God thanks. So David said, even strangers is coming against me. But he said, but behold, verse 4, Psalms 54, verse 4. Behold, God is my helper. The Lord is with them that uphold my soul. So in other words, he knew God is still with me. His mercy does not expire. I want y'all to keep remembering that. As you go throughout your day, as you go throughout this week, as you go throughout your life, you can keep giving God thanks because you know it's going to get better. You messed up, but you ain't getting what you deserve. Why? Because his mercy, his mercy endures forever. You know it's just a season. Somebody said, I hate the cold. I hate the cold. But guess what? <laughs> that season is going to end. Glory to God. Somebody said, oh, boy, I love the fall weather. Here come cold. But don't worry about it. Summer coming. Hmm? Yo, summer is coming. Don't let the enemy distract you. Listen to me. Do not let the enemy distract you. You focus on what God is doing. God is doing some amazing things in spite of COVID. Listen to what I'm telling somebody. In spite of COVID, God is doing some amazing things. Listen, if you know me, you know I like to plant seeds and grow crops, right? I enjoy it. I enjoy it. But sometimes you plant that seed in real life. You plant that seed or you do certain things and you're expecting something to happen. And it don't look like nothing has happened. Hmm? Listen to me. I know that when I plant that seed, I can't see it. I can't see it, but there's a process going on. There's a germination process going on, huh? There's roots that start and develop, and all of a sudden you start to see something poop, peek through that soil, huh? It look, it's, it's real small, but you it peek through that soil, and then it say, oh, that little thing ain't gonna do nothing, and then poop, it keeps growing, and it keeps growing, and that's how it is with our faith. You having faith in God, and you got that seed. And it, it, you can't see what's happening. You, and and the, the, this is what the enemy wants you to do. He wants you to abort that seed before it start, before you start seeing anything, huh? And you look like ain't nothing happening, but I'm telling you, huh? It says it's, it's first natural, then spiritual, huh? I can, you can learn from natural things, and it can relate to what's going on in the spirit. That's why Jesus always spoke parables. There was a sower that went to sow seeds. And this fell on this rag. He, he can take something that's natural and transform it into the spiritual so that you can understand. Listen to me now. So that thing that you that the enemy trying to make you give up on, he, he trying to make you distract you. Look at that, all that stuff they got growing over here. And then look at you. You got a seed in the ground. and ain't nothing happening. 
yes, something is happening up under that soil, huh? But he wants you to give up before you reap your harvest. You just start thanking God. Thank you, God, that I got a seed in the ground, huh? And then, boom, then, and just think about it in, in the spirit now. You got things that you believe in God for. But somewhere down the line, as you're waiting on your harvest, you messed up. You messed up. You sinned against God. You messed up in whatever situation that may be. So the enemy is shifting you to, you, you're unworthy now. You're unworthy of the things that you believe in God for. The enemy want to shift you away from it. But all I'm telling you is just keep thanking God. So this Thanksgiving, this Thanksgiving, no matter what you got going on right now in your life, you may have everything you want. And you, it's easy for you to lift up your hands, but you may not have everything you want. You may have gotten laid off. You may have been told that last week was your last week. And you're trying to figure out how you're going to get everything done. Listen, some stuff you just can't figure out. You just got to start lifting your hands and thanking God for what you do have. And I promise you, as you start doing that, listen, God don't go back on his promises. As you start doing that, he will make way. Now, let's, let's, let's look at something in uh, the Bible said in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5. You can turn if you want to. But he said, this is, this is what the Bible said. He said, he will never leave us nor forsake us. Listen to me. He will never leave us nor forsake us. Jesus said, lo, I am with you even until the end of the world. His mercy don't expire. God don't expire. If he say he's going to be with you until the end of the world, huh? If he, go, if he say he'll never leave you nor forsake you, you going through, but the enemy showing you you're hopeless. But I'm telling you, you got hope. The Lord is your helper. The Lord said, I ain't going nowhere. He said, neither height nor depth nor any of these things can separate us from the love of God. You may have messed up, but don't give up. There's a big difference in messing up and giving up. Somebody says it's the same. No, it's not. It's a difference between messing up and giving up. Judas messed up. Peter messed up. Judas messed up. Peter messed up. But Judas gave up. Judas gave up. Peter did not give up. He stayed with it. And it was Peter that says, this is that which was spoken on the day of Pentecost when the Holy Spirit came. It was Peter that said, it, this is that which was spoken. Why? He didn't give up. The enemy showed Judas, you, you, you're terrible. Now, truth be told, when Peter denied Christ, he wanted to give up. But he didn't give up. Huh? He didn't give up. So, I want to share something with you. Real quick before we get ready to end. In the book of Samuel. Let's go to Samuel, 1 Samuel, chapter 30. Let's go to 1 Samuel, chapter 30. Praise God. 1 Samuel, chapter 30. As we get ready to end this, don't you give up. Don't you give up. You just lift your hands. You lift your hands and start thanking God. You start listening. The old folk used to say, <laughs> count your many blessings, name them one by one. You start counting blessings, man, listen, you'll be, this time tomorrow, you'll still be counting. Thank you, God, that I can see. Thank you, God, I got two eyes. Thank you, God, I got two hands. Thank you, God, that my fingers work. Thank you, Lord, that my heart's still beating. Thank you, Lord, that my digestive system working. Thank you, Lord, that I can walk. You just start thanking all, man, listen, we can be here to, to this time, to, to next Sunday, still thanking God. Thank you, God, that my children got their eyes. But they, thank you, God. You just, you just start thanking God. And before you know it, the stuff that the enemy trying to show you, you didn't forgot all about that mess. Why? Because you're continually giving God thanks. And the more you start thanking, the more he just... Just start dump, just start dumping it on you. All right, but 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 I'm not gonna read all of this, but I want to read some some high points of this story, and I just want to give you the context, the context of what happened in First Samuel chapter thirty. Now, when you get there, First Samuel chapter thirty. This is still David. This is still David. Now, this is what happened. Just to paraphrase this, David and his men. He took some men. They went out to fight. And they was gone three days. But while they was gone, the camp was invaded. The enemy came and took the, the, the wives, they took the children, and they burnt 
the whole place down. So let's, that's, that's what we're picking up at. All right, but it says in, 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 in chapter 1, uh, or chapter 30, 1 Samuel chapter 30, verse 1. It said, it came to pass when David and his men came to Ziglag on the third day that the Amalekites had invaded the south and Ziglag and had smitten Ziglag and burnt it with fire and had taken the wives captive that were therein and slew not any, neither small or great, and car but carried them away and went on their way. So just imagine that. David and his men come back. And the, their city is burnt. Not only that, but the ones that they love was taken captive. And we pick up here in uh, verse 3. It says, So David and his men came to the city, and behold, it was burnt with fire, and their wives and their sons and their daughters were taken captive. Now, it, they took all of them wives and their children. But who do you think got the blame? Who do you think got the blame? They they all was gone for three days and they come back and all the men's wives and all the men's children was gone and everything they possessed was burnt to the ground. Who do you think took the blame for that? Yes, the leader, David, took all the blame. Listen what happened. He said, then David and the people that were with him lifted up their voices and wept until they had no power to weep no more. And it said, that all the men, that, well, let's, let's look right in verse 6. And it says, and David was greatly distressed, for the people spake of stoning David. <sighs> if there's any time you want to give up, listen, I ain't got my wife, I ain't got my children. Everything I got is burnt up. It's hopeless. It, it's hopeless. <laughs> it's hopeless. That's what the enemy want to show you. Listen, your wife and children gone. Everything you got burnt to the ground. You still, you still, you still thanking God. You ain't finna think, you still thanking God behind this. You ain't got nothing. You ain't got no wife, no children, everything you got is burnt. You ain't got nothing. But this is what David said. He said, it, let's start back up at, at six. And David was greatly distressed for the people spake of stoning him because the souls of all the people was grieved and every man for his son and every man for his daughter. They wanted to flat out kill David. David is you. You the one had us gone for three days. I knew we shouldn't have never left. That was a stupid idea. You just gonna leave the wife and, and the children here? Man, you crazy. You dumb. You stupid. You just he hearing all this from so many different people. Thousands of people. He listening to all this mess. And he's feeling a certain type of way. Oh man. Listen, listen. For one thing, he feeling my wife and children are gone. I don't know if they dead. I don't know if they're alive. I don't I and then he come out and now everybody's looking at him like this. We should kill you right now. Y'all get your stones ready. What? What? Whoa, whoa. What, what, what you doing? We was all going together. No, we finna kill you. How do you... He, he, he grieving. And now he got everybody throwing stones, wanting to throw stones at him. Listen, the enemy don't play fair. That's just all it is to it. The enemy don't play fair. He want to put so much pressure on you till you just give up. Giving up for some people looks different. Some people end their life. Some people go into hiding. Some people are still there, but they're just going through the motion. They're like robots. They're like they're it's like they're soulless. So giving up for some people looks different. But this is what David did when the when he lost everything and then he being talked to like they want to kill him. David it said this is what the Bible said. It said, but David encouraged himself in the Lord. Now, you think, how could a man going through all this find enough in him to start to encourage himself? And you may ask, well, how can I encourage myself? <laughs> That's what this message today is all about. Because David, if you go back and look at those psalms that David wrote, the things that he's going through in, in, in Chronicles and, and Samuel and all that, that's where you get these psalms from. David knew, in spite of what it looked like, I'm not looking at the burnt houses. I'm not looking at the stuff gone. I'm not looking at my wife and children gone. I'm not looking at these folks that want to stone me. I'm going to lift up my eyes unto the hills from which cometh my help. <clears throat> Glory to God. David said, I'm not looking at what the enemy trying to show me. I'm finna lift up my eyes to the hills from which cometh my help. Why? Because my help comes from the Lord. These men want to kill me. 
It ain't coming from them. It ain't coming from my best friend. Why? Because my best friend had turned his back on me. That was my dog. That's how we say. That, he, he my dog. I know my dog ain't. That's my boy. And, and what the lady say? That's 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 my girl. That's that that's my that's my. I don't know what the lady say, but the guys who say that's my dog. That's my boy. That's my partner. That's that's my man's. That's 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 my guy. But your guy done turned his back on you. Your home girl. Your home skillet. Your home slice. Whatever you may call it. They done turned their back on you. So where do you go? What do you do? His mercy don't expire. I'm going to lift my eyes to the hills from which come my help. My help comes from the Lord. David said, it's a good thing. <laughs> Listen, if this man can encourage himself in the Lord after losing his wife and children, after everything he got got burnt up, after people are planning to stone him and kill him, his best friends, we ate together. If all this could happen, he ain't got nothing. No support. <laughs> As it may look, or at least that's what the enemy trying to show you, you're all by yourself. You're all by your lonesome. But listen, I just want to encourage you today. Lift them hands up. <laughs> lift up your eyes. Understand that you need to give thanks. <laughs> just start thanking God. Why? Because it's going to get better. Things are about to change. You just start thanking God. You just start thanking him. Why? Because his mercy, it don't expire. It endures forever. It ain't no expiration date on it. This contract don't end. This is a covenant. God is with you, and God is going to stay with you. Listen, uh, Psalms 107 and 2. Psalms 107 and 2. What does it say? Psalms... 107 and 2. Listen to me now. Psalms 107 and 2. As we get ready to wrap this up. Psalms 107 and 2. Listen, somebody, I promise you, it's tough. It's tough when you lose a loved one. I promise you. Listen, it seems like the weight of the world is on your shoulders. But if you could just lift up your eyes, if you could just think on his goodness and just start thinking. Ah, I lost my loved ones. But hold up, I'm still here. I'm still breathing. I still have other loved ones. Hold up, I lost my job. Let me tell you something, there's thousands of companies right now hiring. Listen, there's another one waiting on you and he got the perfect one for you. But Psalms 107 and two says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy. Listen, you keep giving thanks to God. So let the redeemed say so. Why? As you that are redeemed start saying so, start letting people know that, hey, the enemy had me. At least the enemy thought he had me, but the Lord re re redeemed me. He rescued me from the hand of the enemy. That's giving others that encouragement. to know, listen, I ain't worried about what I'm going through. Jesus said, Lo, I'm with you even until the ends of the world. God said, I'd never leave you nor forsake you. He said, His mercy endures forever. My help coming. My help is coming. Listen, your help is coming. Don't give up. <laughs> Don't give up. It's coming. Listen, help is on the way. Help is already on the way. The enemy say, no, it ain't. Uh -uh -uh. Don't look over there. Uh -uh. Cut, cut that live off. Don't look. No, no. Cut the live off. Don't share it. No, no, no. Cut it off. Listen, your help is coming. The enemy wants you to focus on. Uh -uh. Cut that off. Look at the news. Focus on the news. Ooh, look, ooh, that's bad. Ooh, that many people die. Ooh, it's going to be bad. Ooh, this, this winter is going to be so terrible. Ooh, next summer it's going to, ooh, 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 ooh. So many oohs. But David don't say ooh. He said, oh, magnify the Lord with me. Huh? The devil wants you to say, ooh, look at that, ooh. But David said, oh, oh, come on, come on, y'all. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. But David, we, we ain't, oh, just come on. Don't worry about it. Just come on. Watch what I tell you. <laughs> David said, why do what I tell you? I've been in this situation too many times. Oh, you messed up? Oh, yeah. Okay, you messed up. Okay, David said, oh, but you must ain't read my story. I messed up way, way more times than you. Much bigger situations. But that mercy, that mercy came to my rescue. Glory to God. Mercy came to my rescue. And therefore, therefore, I can lift up my eyes into the hills because I know his mercy is coming. Mercy is on the way. Somebody, you need to know that. Mercy is on the way. 
whatever you're dealing with. He said, my grace, my grace is sufficient. Whatever you may need at that present moment, God know your needs before you even ask. Before you even ask, he already know your needs. So sometimes you just, all you can say is thank you. You don't even, may not even know what you need right now. Huh? You may not even know what can help you the most right now. But God knows. Just lift your hands. I encourage somebody right now to lift your hands and say, God, I thank you. Oh, God, I thank you. <laughs> oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You just start thanking him. The more you start thanking him, the more you start praising him. Before you know it, your feet get light. And with those folks, you say, your feet get light. You start picking them up and putting them down. And before you know it, hello? Hey, what's going on? Oh, man, listen, uh, we was finna head by there and bring you some. Woo! Okay. Oh, you trying, you trying to stay calm. Like, uh, you need anything? Yeah, well, I'll take it. You know, yeah, I'll take it. Uh, yeah, yeah, all right. Then as soon as you hang off that phone, you... Then you start dancing, huh? You start dancing. Oh, God, I thank you. Woo! Woo! And then the next time this, uh, you get in a situation and him starts showing you this, throwing this. But see, this time is a little different. See, that's the enemy that says, see, this time is a little different. This time is worse than the last time. <laughs> Man, don't try to mess with me. You said, the devil, get thee behind. That's why Jesus said, get thee behind me, Satan. Don't try that mess with me. Don't even try that with me. Tell about something. Listen, I give you all this if you do this. I'm showing you this and that. You say, don't worry about what it looked like. Get that mess. Get 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 back. Come on, Jesus. You say you ain't got no place to lay your head. You're out here with, with these guys and you, you ain't got no big castle and all that. Get thee behind me, Satan. In my father's house, there are many mansions. Don't, don't try to mess with me. I'm a child of the king. But you got to have that mindset that I'm not going to give up. No matter what it look like, I'm not going to give up. Oh, whatever, whatever I don't have, I'm not going to give up. Whatever you do have, what I mean by that, you may have that sickness. You may have that illness. You may have that uh, financial situation. You truly have it. You truly have it. David, David truly had burnt a burnt up house. He truly had wives and children missing. He truly had it. But what we didn't finish reading in, in 2 Samuel uh, verse uh, uh, chapter 30, Verse 18, it said that David, he went and recovered all. <laughs> all that the enemy took from him, the Bible said that David recovered all. Somebody may not believe that. That's why I'm flipping scriptures, because I'm going to read it. I'm going to read it, because somebody, because the enemy saying, he just, he, you know, he didn't read that part. He read out other scriptures, but he didn't read that part. See, the enemy just, shut up, devil. Sometimes you just got to say, shut up, devil. You may be, don't, now, if you're in Walmart, you just say, shut up, devil. You shut up, devil. Don't be, shut up, devil. So, uh, uh, security, all down. Uh, we got somebody over there, a looney tune. <laughs> don't be out there in Walmart. You got to, see, sometimes you be in Walmart, you got your headphones on, and people see you, they think you're talking to yourself, and then you over there, shut up, devil. And, oh. So if you at her in Walmart right now, just shut up, devil. But you at home, you say, shut up, devil. The devil trying to talk that mess. Don't, don't, get him out of here. Get thee behind me. But in second, in 1 Samuel chapter 30, so I want to read it because the enemy always trying to start some mess. But David, in, 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 second, in 1 Samuel chapter 30, verse 18, it says, And David recovered all that the Amalekites had carried away, and David rescued his wives. Huh? And it said, And there was nothing lacking of them, neither small nor great, neither sons nor daughters, neither spoil nor anything that they had taken, David recovered all. And I'm pretty sure when the enemy showed them that it was burnt and they were missing, the enemy said, they cut your wives' heads off and they burnt up your children. They're all gone. You ain't got nothing. But he encouraged himself because God's mercy Hey, God's mercy. Hey, God's mercy endures forever. He cures himself and he said he recovered all. So don't worry about what the enemy say. Don't you give up. This is going to be a great Thanksgiving. This is going to be a great day. Why? Because the Lord is good. His mercy endures forever. That's what David said. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. <laughs> hey, for his mercy endures forever praise god praise god praise god god is so good god is so good i wanted to let you know and i'm gonna tell you now in micah 7 and 8 it said you may have fallen that's why i started out by saying yeah you may have sinned so what 
You may have messed up. So what? The reason why you're going through could be because of your own faults. So what? Does that change his mercy? <laughs> nope. Does that change anything? One thing David said, forgive me, wash me, cleanse me, and let's keep on moving. You ain't even want to keep throwing it up in your face. Don't, don't listen at that. You just start thinking. It's going to take your mind off of what the enemy trying to show you, how bad you are, how terrible you are. You start thinking on how good he is. <laughs> it said our righteousness without him is nothing but filthy rags anyway. So no matter how good you try to be, it's filthy rags without him. So the enemy is constantly showing you this, but you focus on how good he is. Woo! That's when things start to change. So praise God. I thank God for just this opportunity today. And I want to extend a opportunity to someone out here, or someone that may be watching, listening, that may not have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You may not have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, but I want to offer that opportunity to you right now. So if you would pray this prayer with me, Lord Jesus, I believe the word of God. And the word of God says that if I confess my sins and confess the Lord Jesus in my heart, I shall be saved. So I just want you to say, Lord, I receive you into my life right now. Lord, forgive me of all my sins. Lord, I believe that you was raised on the third day. And Lord Jesus, I invite you to come into my heart and be my savior. Praise God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. Now, if you... Pray those prayers. This is what I want you to do. We just want to congratulate you and welcome you into the kingdom of God because the Bible said that the angels in heaven are rejoicing over just one. And we just want to encourage you to continue listening to New Beginnings Christian Life Center and listen to that word. Stay in that word. Continue in that word. Remember that you have given your life to Christ. The enemy going to show you that no, all you did was pray, let prayer. No. You made a confession that Jesus is Lord, that Jesus was raised on the third day by his father in Jesus name. Hallelujah. Now, praise God. We thank God for that message. We thank God for that. And I want you to keep that message in your heart. But right now is opportunity to prosper time. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. God is good. Amen. Now, we want to stay in the mode of giving. Praise God. Stay in the mode of giving because God is good. And we said his mercy is doing forever. And the Bible said that as you give, he will give. He said he, you give to him, he'll give to you. Now, the people, the old folks just tell me all the time, you can't get, beat God giving no matter how hard you try. It always uh, amazes me of how God continues to bless as you give. The Bible said that Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in my house. And he said, see, he said, prove me now. Prove me. See if I'll do it. If I would not open up the windows of heaven. And pastors always tell us there's more windows than doors. So as you give, he will open up the windows of heaven and shower down his blessings. Why? Because his house will be taken care of. If you take care of God's house, he will take care of of your house. So you got several ways that you can give. You can give through PayPal. Praise God. You can give through Cash App, New Beginnings, CLC, New Beginnings, Plur, CLC. So you got PayPal and you have Cash App and you can also mail it in. That's P.O. Box. If you're going to mail it in, that's P.O. Box 320-658. That's Flowood, Mississippi. All right, uh, flow with Mississippi. I think somebody had just typed typed that in, uh, but yes, that is Peel Box three two zero six five eight. That's in Flowwood, Mississippi. So those are your three ways that you can give. You can give through PayPal, New Beginnings Plural CLC, Cash App New Beginnings Plural CLC, and you can also mail it in Peel Box three two zero six five eight. Flowood, Mississippi. Praise God. If I left anything out, someone has it. I think someone has it right there in the in the message center in the chat. Or if not, look at it later and it'll, it'll definitely be in there. But those are your three ways to give. And we just thank God. And also, uh, by way of announcements, uh, we will have, listen to me clearly now, we will have pre 
Thanksgiving service. That'll be this Wednesday at 6 p.m. So Wednesday night at 6 p.m., we will have pre-Thanksgiving service that'll be on Facebook Live. So we'll be here Facebook Live. Thank God for our pastors, Pastor Kevin and Pastor Liz Wright. Uh, we thank God for uh, just their hearts and their love. They wouldn't hear today because of their compassion to help uh, someone that is going through. So we just thankful for them. They're just who they are. They have great big hearts. Amen. So just remember that uh, they will be uh, back in town. They'll be back here. Um, Priest Thanksgiving Day service. That'll be Wednesday night, 6 p.m. If someone wasn't able to watch this live, make sure you let them know to tune in Wednesday night at 6 p.m. for our pre-Thanksgiving service. So, praise God. I thank you for just uh, staying tuned to this message. Don't give up. Keep giving thanks. Jesus is Lord, and y'all have a blessed day.